Hello, I'm Cheryl Turner. I'm the coordinator of the Modern Elder Project and the creator of the Modern Elder Podcast. This project is made possible by a generous grant from the New Horizons for Seniors, and it consists of 16 artists who have worked together for the past six months to create a series of paintings with their ideas about aging, the joys, the possibilities, the some of the challenges, and we try to maintain a positive focus, hoping to shift people's preconceived notions of aging and to present a positive and uplifting view of aging. In Hindu tradition, uh, when you're 60, 65, you um stop and you stop your regular work and, and uh, or you, a homemaker or worker, um, they say you become a forest dweller because you get spend more time, uh, you can spend more time uh, contemplating for the rest of your life and, and the contemplation it can also be a total new look at life and, and, and deepen our emotional and spiritual outlook. And having maybe more time, um, we can be more outdoors, uh, have new experiences, uh, enjoy art and music, be creative, should be a time of sort of an enlightenment. And we can choose ourselves where we like to focus on. And um, in this case, I thought the forest does have a whole bunch of stuff in it. Growth, old growth, new growth. I like the idea that, um... You know, we still have lots of growing to do, even as we as we age and become elders and elderly. We still have we are still becoming right. We're still developing and learning and growing and still becoming. Well, when I'm painting, I sort of forget about everything else, troubles of the world. And um, I get completely involved in in my painting, <laughs> forget the time and. Oh, it's, um, which is a very nice thing to relax to, I think. This one is called solitude. Well, one gets older, then you see um, the reality is that, you know, the partner might pass away. Our friends pass away. Um, it's the older you get, more more people you know. And then there is... A big part is loneliness, and this is what part of this is loneliness. Um, you can see that on that little figure there, it's totally alone. But we have to realize that that life still goes on, and uh, we're still on a journey. And even if we are close uh, to the winter, but there are still a bunch of golden leaves on the trees that have fallen for new experiences and explorations. And, um, and then we even may experience, we might find joy again and, and can dream by a full moon, <laughs> making a journey and, and well, life is not gone. So even though when you get way older, you're sort of in the winter of life. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of this. Uh, I was searching for something that I, I thought reflected uh, our um, our show and the theme that we wanted to uh, convey. Uh, one of them, uh, Boys and Their Toys, was was a, something I photographed in, in Kelowna, an uh, older gentleman doing uh, toy boats as opposed to out there sailing in, in their, you know, in big boats. And I thought, I, when I saw it, I thought that was, it was wonderful. Anytime I see seniors doing something where they're actively involved. I, I, when I think of aging, I um, I think of attitude. I th and I know, and I've, I've appreciated seniors who had, who have had a very positive attitude on aging. They seem to be spirited. They seem to be happier. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I I think it one has to reflect on on that. You know, uh, making the most as as we age. Because uh, uh, sometimes I think that uh, I look around and I, I see other people aging and we don't often look at ourselves and think, oh, I've hit 65 or I've hit 70 and so on. And those milestones are really important. And what are we doing about it? Like, are we 
we're retired, many of us from our jobs and um, what comes next? You know, how do we make the most of life? And uh, I, I feel fortunate. I've got a lot of interests. I, art is one of them and uh, music and photography. So I combine all those and, and, and find uh, that I'm very busy uh, trying to find time to enjoy all those things. Um, and those were things I didn't spend a lot of time doing during my career. Um, so when I retired, I sat down thinking, okay, here's the time when I want to spend, uh, that I want to invest some time in and, uh, and see where it goes, and, but also enjoy the journey. And that was, that was my, um, my goal for me anyway. So when we talked about uh, creating paintings that uh, typified our impressions about aging, I came up with two ideas. One of the paintings, which you can see behind me, is an abstract version of an iceberg. I chose an iceberg because um, older people like myself, um, what you see physically is someone with gray hair, what's left, uh, the wrinkles and all the other things that come with being uh, an, an elder. Um, but what you don't see um, are all the things that I've learned, all the wisdom I have, all the things that I can do um, when I connect with other people, the value that I present to others. Um, and it's just like an iceberg, because an iceberg, you only see the top, you know, one ninth of it, and the rest of it's all underwater. So, so I call it Portraits in Resilience. Um, and so that'll be part of the show. The other painting that I created um, focuses on um, how we perceive time and how we focus or not uh, on what's going on for us in the present. Um, you know, at this stage of my life, I've learned that, you know, all the things that are important to me can only happen in the present. I can only learn in the present. I can only love in the present. I can only discover in the moment. All of the things that are important only happen now. And yet we find ourselves, especially as elders, we find ourselves um, focusing on the past and maybe things that we wish would have been different. Um, and also the future, like what does the future hold? Um, and uh, what, I've, what I've learned, of course, is that there's really nothing you can do about either. And so I created um, a stylized timepiece um, with now in the center of it. Uh, and I call the painting, The Power of Now. So in the one with the hands, um, so it's kind of the idea that we're all connected. And I mean, you could take this all the way back to the Sistine Chapel and the, you know, the touch of God, the, 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 it's kind of um, echoes that kind of look, but it actually is myself and my two granddaughters. And it's talking about how time is eternal. Time goes on, whether we're here or not. And so what we can pass on to the next generation, the information, um, the values, the, the love, the caring, um, and of course the art too, um, that's what will carry on. And so that piece um, talks about how, uh, how transient time is and yet how enduring time is. And so that's um, looking, looking through a window and, and having our um, fingers you know, almost touching in that piece. Um, the other piece is uh, kind of more of the botanical um, piece, but it also has text in the background that's uh, so much, you have to look for it a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. And um, it also is talking about time and how there's a time for everything. Um, you know, a time to live and a time to die, a time to grow and a time to harvest and so on and so forth. And so in our lives, as we mature, right, you come to realize that those times, you need to value each of those times because each of them has something you can learn from that time in your life or in that situation in your life. Realize that they really don't have to feel sorry for themselves, that aging is an interactive process and that family is important. You can age. Hmm. You can age, I want to say properly, but that's not what I mean. Yeah, I know. Positively. Positively, yeah. You don't have to allow, you know, some physical issues that occur. I'm a lot slower than I was, you know, 50 years ago. There's no question about that. But it doesn't matter because I still enjoy life and I still... I'm still healthy enough that I can do many of the things that I used to do. I just can't do them as fast. I don't do them quite as well. 
and there's always something interesting going on around you. My own kids keep me up to date. And for example, they talk about technology increases. I have one child and two grandchildren who are into, into echo living. They're forever updating me on what's going wrong with the world. Well, I know that that's the case, but you still can't. I mean, you can know all that, but you still have to do what you can and just keep a positive attitude. Mm -hmm. Don't get bogged down. Don't get bogged down. Yeah. It's interesting when you think of ageism and you think of getting older, everyone looks at the negative stuff. You creak, mm -hmm. you, you lose your memory, all those things, except because you're older, you have life experience that you can apply to your art in this case. You mm -hmm. have all kinds of relationships that are built and improved upon because of being an artist. I didn't have the network I had before I moved here. I now mm -hmm. have you have a friend. I have associations that I have now joined that get me out of the house versus staying at home and painting. It's been really a wonderful ev evolution for me. But aging artists, I've always been old as an artist. I've never been a young artist, so I don't, I don't have anything to compare it to. Mm -hmm. I think that because my mobility has been challenged, the fact I can sit and do something, be productive, bring joy to myself, it doesn't hurt me, it tires me out, of course, but I bring joy to myself and to others, that is such a fulfilling thing. It's very, very different than anything I've ever done before, because everything I've done before created, you know, I had to walk and talk and do all that. Now, I can still talk, so that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I think... It, that's another, you bring up another good point that I think it's important that as, as aging people, we can still contribute to society and contribute to the joy of others through art, right? And it, does, it doesn't require you to be in anybody's face. You're, you're delivering messages and stories in your art that people mm -hmm. create their own memories and stories around. They look at it, something resonates with them, they love it or they don't. And it's mm -hmm. very subjective and it's, it's a really good thing. It opens up different conversations. My process was, first thing I wrote down, I did the pros and cons, the cons, not so hot. The pros, because I, the more I thought about it, the pros got longer and longer and longer. So oh, yes, you get, a, you get a bus pass, you get to get breaks at Shoppers Restaurant on Tuesdays. If you're disabled, <laughs> you get a thing that says you can park in certain spots and not pay as much. There's mm -hmm. lots of lots, and you have a different level of respect because you're older. So therefore, what you put on canvas has all that added to it. The benefits are in there. The stories are in there. The experience is in there. You can't help but, but create uh, things with more depth than you probably could have if I, if I had started as a younger person. Mm -hmm. I think at 30, I'd be whipping off really quick and dirty abstracts. Now my things have lots of texture and depth to them and layers and layers and every layers has lots of energy and lots of heart. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't think as a young artist, I would have had any of that. So one is um, two ladies that have painted together for over 30 years. Um, they're a generation apart in age and they paint plein air um, uh, around the older ladies residence somewhere and um, they're just such, it's so inspiring to me. And I think, I know when people have seen the painting, they've said to me, oh, it reminds me of my best friend and I. So it kind of evokes um, the emotion of dear friendship. And some people do have lifelong friends and the longer you live, the more dear they become. Mm, that's for sure. I know that's a big thing for me too. Just the, just your ability and to connect. I think you know as you learn how to communicate or whatever, and you're just more comfortable with yourself uh, as you get older, right? And, and I uh, think if you keep those um, those relationships and connections, your mental health is better as you age too. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I think it keeps you younger in a lot of ways or slows the aging process. So. Mm -hmm. that, that was part of what I was thinking as well. Uh, the other painting is another um, artist friend who is um, a community spirit where I live. Um, 
She's always getting the community involved in art. Uh, she did a, a mural on one of our buildings and anybody that wanted to paint on it could paint on it, whether they had any art talent or thought they did or not. No one was turned away. Um, the painting is of her at our local Saturday market. She, she has a booth for the Arts Council in our area. And um, she was out there this, this summer in the blazing heat, encouraging the youth that have been deprived of school for because of COVID, of course, um, missing their art classes. She was trying to get them painting. So she brought her watercolors and she'd get them painting. And um, I would go with her and, and it was, I just found that really inspiring. And I hope she's around for a long time to share that enthusiasm with more and more people. And I chose to go with a painting that tells a story about what a person would find if they visited a seniors complex, for example, or a person that's in a care home. Because in my background, my mother was in a care home and I do remember so well what it was like to visit her. Uh, and we've had many relatives over the years where I've also visited people that required almost like 24 hour care. And that was profound for me because I, maybe secretly I've always thought, my gosh, I hope I don't end up there someday. Uh, and it bothered me every time I left the facilities it bothered me that people had lost so much of their identity. They, didn't, they weren't able to keep personal things in their rooms. A lot of times they were physically challenged, they were mentally challenged. Um, the, the places, even though they were humane and they were, you know, the staff were kind, there were so many limitations. And I, I found that really bothering. And so, uh, my painting tries to tell that story, but what's on the bedside table? First of all, I, I hope that the public finds the stories really informative, that they find them interesting, that they're, that maybe as they go through the exhibition, they're going to realize things that they never ever had to go there before. Maybe they never realized before. I'm also hoping that people get a, a glimpse into the lives of what aging artists are going through. In other words, uh, it's not just a matter of, oh, isn't that an interesting painting? That perhaps as they, they go through the exhibition, they will start to recognize the struggles that, that the artists themselves had. Uh, and particularly from, for, in my case, what I, I'm talking about. But also what I wanted to show, if somebody who really studies that painting, they're gonna say, well, this is interesting, What's, in the, what's on the table, but what is not on the table? For example, you don't see spoons and forks. You, you, uh, you don't see a set of car keys or room keys. Uh, the, the absence of that tells me that this person is very dependent on other people looking after him. So I, I didn't want to clutter it with with items that are, you know, personal clothing, washcloths, towels, things that maybe a lot of people would have on their tables, but in this particular man's life, uh, it's 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 cluttered, but it's not cluttered with a lot of items that he would not have. It becomes controversial, just in the sense that not only what's there, but what is not there. Being a part of a group, I thought it would. Uh allow me to um, express my own view and uh, be a challenge. So I'm, I'm enjoying how it's making me think about different aspects of my life and how to portray my philosophy. I thought what was important to me was to uh, express um, play in your life and uh, doing what gives you joy and through your friendships and social interaction um, it's really important and uh, that you can even if you're older like be silly whenever you want and when the mood strikes and laugh and and follow your passions like I think 
so many things, uh, you know, could make us smile. So I just wanted to do something uh, that would put a smile on people's faces and make them think about doing the fun things. Don't don't always, oh, I need to do the laundry or the house needs to be clean before I do this. Like go do, go out and play. Make sure you keep play in your life and and make time for it because it's so important. Uh, I believe in keeping fit and active and and not always doing maybe what you think you ought to be doing. Like there's always chores at home to do. <laughs> I think some of the same reasons as I would be doing this project is challenging. Um, you learn things, I think with watercolor in particular, you learn patience mm. and you learn uh, to be prepared to be organized before you start. You don't just start. You, mm. you have a good drawing and, um, and you figure out your paint colors and all that before you start. You figure out your technique you're gonna use. Um, in watercolor, you can't cover up very much. No, right. You can't, you're, if your mistake is really, really bad, Sometimes it's impossible to fix, so you better not make that mistake in the first place. Learned um, to observe. I'm observing all the time, and sometimes that's not a good thing. <laughs> when you're in a, in a, walking along the edge of a cliff and you're gawking around. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think that if there's one profession where you get better as you age, Mm. I really think, and like where you don't, where ageism doesn't come into it so much. Yeah. It's more like you're valued because you're older, because mm. you've done more art, because you've got this portfolio behind you, because you've got a reputation. Um, I think that um, uh, being older as an artist is a good thing. Um, younger artists, they struggle. Well, now we don't struggle. <laughs> we just mm. do. Like yeah. most of us are retired. Like maybe all of us are retired. So mm -hmm. we can do what we want to do. Right. Um, and yet still learning, right? Still, yeah. still yeah. learning, still becoming, still progressing. Yeah. Um, being a grandparent is one of the greatest joys that I've experienced. <laughs> Um, I'm not under the stress of having taken care of my kids and on and on it goes for parents, but for grandparents, you know, you have a good, wonderful time with them. Maybe you help babysit every now and again. We just get to have some joyful times with them, fun times. And it's just a wonderful time in my life. Then the other thing that inspired my other painting. Okay, so this is the hiking, the hiking with the granddaughters. Right. And I used happy colors. All right. And so the other thing that came to my mind with this painting here is I am a dancer. And one of the most enjoyable, fulfilling forms of dance that I've ever done in my life is worship dance or liturgi liturgical dance in church, spiritual form of dance. Hmm. And um, there's a song that really speaks to me. Um, it, it's a song that I, I've heard sung, you know, in our church music, and it has to do with um, God is sovereign in my life. And all the pieces in my life, from beginning to the end, he's been with me. And, okay. I, and I can trust him in the elder years of my life, that he'll be with me. And that gives me a spiritual hope. Mm -hmm. And um, the use of the flag is I used to, when I was younger, <laughs> be able to, you know, dance with pirouettes and, you know, lots of energy and whatnot. And I can't quite do that anymore. Um, but uh, occasionally we, we pick up a flag in our church and, and we use it and it's 
big and it's bold and it's beautiful and it's creative. And that's an adapt, a way to adapt to the way I used to dance. Now I'm older. This is another way that I can dance. And so I dance with the flag sometimes at church. Well, I think for one thing, it makes you think and it keeps that gray matter up there moving a little bit at least. <laughs> I will always remember Frances Hatfield saying to me when we had a special show for her when she was 90 and she came into the exhibition and said, keep painting, Gail. It keeps your brain working and it keeps you going. <laughs> and physically, it's wonderful to spend time outdoors painting. My friend Gladys Good, who's 97, she and I have not this year because of the COVID and the fire conditions, but normally we go out every Wednesday, take a picnic lunch and go somewhere to paint. So that's, that's really nice for both your physical and mental health. It is, and I think it's, it's also one way that older people can continue to contribute to the community, right? By, by sharing their expression and sharing their wisdom through art and sharing their their skills and just their appreciation of beauty and maybe teaching and like you do and different different ways that art helps you continue to be a contributing member to the community and to society in general. This was sort of fun. I thought, well, I need to do something a little more creative. The other painting was just fun but <laughs> I had to be creative and I got thinking and of course, as you know, I teach art. So one of the things I got thinking about was color theory and this painting is going to be entitled the symbolism of aging, uh, no, an artist's symbolism of aging using color theory. And so you start off at the very bottom of the painting. Can you point? Do you see me pointing it? Yeah. You start off at the bottom with the three primary colors, orange, red, and yellow. And then that's about 10% of the whole sheet. And the next 10% are the secondary colors, green, purple, and orange. And that's another 10th. And then the next 40% are all different colors, just slightly melding together. And the top 40% are all different shades of gray. Mm. So what the writing says on there, because <laughs> I thought it probably needed some explanation. And it's a symbol, it's not it's a different kind of painting. So the bottom says primary colors represent children. Mm -hmm. Secondary colors represent teenagers. The myriad of colors that can be mixed from three primaries represent the complexities of adulthood. Mm -hmm. And the top, the beautiful, elegant, sophisticated greens, shades of gray represent elders. Oh, wonderful. wonderful. <laughs> I love it. But I like, it, like the idea of the top sort of you know, the, the canopy is, because the canopy in a forest is what protects all the younglings so that they can, can grow, right? So I just have just to put the shape of a tree on it to give sort of the tree of life idea. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. as long as you have some semblance of health, then there's so many interesting things to do still. Mm -hmm. I know for one, I try to do too many things all the time. But, <laughs> um, I don't want to give any of them up. <laughs> you know, I really enjoy teaching art. I really enjoy the framing. I run a small, I'm a professional framer and run a small business in my studio. Mm -hmm. Teaching, you meet so many interesting people. It's really, it's really a pleasure too. And then all the other aspects of the art community. You know, I've been, I've really enjoyed being very involved with the art gallery was on the board for 13 years, I think, and chair for, for a while, and um, been involved with the art center, the community art center, as you know. Um, one of the things when I moved here, we joined a, a group of people that do hiking and snowshoeing, and I was really, really totally blown away by the age of the group. My husband and I being in our 60s, and the people, the person leading the group was in their 80s. There's uh, people getting close to 90 in the group. My husband and I had trouble keeping up with them. And there was a group that had hip and knee replacements and they're just up and down and going. We um, have joined the group and that's one of the things that I would like to see my husband and I still able to do when we're in our 80s and 90s. 
And my other painting started out just as a thought process and, and being uh, more abstract. We have like the maybe not, so there's a small one. This is sort of a child crawling. Um, and then the next block is an adult, nice and tall and strong. And then the next one is sort of a tipped over elder person, like thinking of my father. Um, hard to get around when he was in his 80s. Mm -hmm. And then all my friends, all nice and tall and strong and walking um, with all their bandages and <laughs> replacements, knee blue replacements. And then off we go up to heaven with the last block. Well, I guess both of them are, are um, an allegory on life. And so I've called one Lifeline One and lifeline two and i've taken the um the, the the idea of the tree and growth and i've expressed it in two different ways and i kind of like for example in this one um the art my hand or arm which is aging is grasping on to a disc a wooden disc from a tree and the circles in the disc represent the growth rinks mm -hmm. and um when you are young the growth rings are far apart and as you age they get closer and closer together and um you know the hand is grasping on and uh yet despite this um every spring um the tree renews itself mm -hmm. and you have this chance and opportunity for new growth and you know in in nature leaves and they die off and they regenerate and so you know it's the same kind of thing um, really in our own lives that we get this chance to renew mm -hmm. while we're on this earth and so that was kind of what i wanted to express the second one is also also tells a story and the palm of the hand is cradling is cradling onto the preciousness of life and i've used the three stages of a tree or the seedling the, the middle-aged tree and then the older tree to represent these three stages this middle age and elderhood and um what i've done is i've got the, the the roots are grounded but there's also lines in our hands and so i've positioned them in such a way so that you've got the tree on the lifeline you've got the lifeline the heart line which is love and then you've got the headline which is reason and intellect and i thought that it was that was kind of neat that whole concept and um the background clouds represent basically the beauty that surrounds surrounds us and i think this is probably something that um i've perhaps gained as I've gotten older, sort of a real appreciation of all the stages of life and of the beauty around us, that it's very precious. My first painting is called Going for the Gold in Aging. Um, it reflects my attitude about life in general, I think, the idea being uh, to go for the best that you can possibly be, the best that you can hope to uh, achieve or enjoy in terms of aging, um, seeing the possibilities, seeing the um, positive side of aging and the positive side of life in general to make your life the best that you can be. So the idea of going for the gold. It also reflects the Japanese idea of kintsugi, which means that, which is a um, process applied to broken pottery. So the idea being that every person is broken in some way or another, but when you mend the, the broken parts with gold, um, they become even more precious. The second painting is called A Treasure Box of Memories. And it was created with a very interesting process. I do, you can see the remnants of a very small uh, portrait, self-portrait at the bottom of the painting. And then I turned the painting upside down and just started to think about my memories, think about um, whatever I have in my memory box and just uh, dumped it onto the canvas. And so there are some dark times, there are some 
wonderful times. There are some intense times. Um, and altogether, the tone or the feeling of the painting is very positive. It's golden, it's light, and it's very soft. So that, that, that idea also reflects the, the phenomenon that in, uh, memories kind of soften over time. Even those dark and difficult memories um, can be seen you know, as learning experiences or just uh, times that you overcame and that you were resilient and you managed to uh, become a stronger person as you lived through those some of those memories. I love doing it. I love seeing it and reading about it and reading about other artists' lives. I like art history. Um, I like the whole thing. In fact, I never used to like history until I started reading about other artists oh. and, and somehow I could relate to history that way. Doing art, like drawing, for example, absorbs me totally and um, everything else, I can almost forget about time. I f it makes me feel good. It's almost spiritual to me. The other thing I like about it is it makes me feel as if I'm part of the human world, you know, mm -hmm. we connect as a human being. Well, what I want other people to know is that when you have a passion for something and it doesn't have to be art, it could be anything, it can consume you, fulfill me and it, at the time you're doing it, it consumes you and you're thinking about it. I sometimes lose sleep over trying to solve a composition, a painting composition, you know, is it, why isn't going right? I'm, I'm problem solving these painting composition things instead of worrying about my aches and pains. I sort of build it up and allow it to evolve into a composition. Unexpected things happen. I feel every painting is like an imitation of a bigger problem, a practical problem that you might have in life. You know, it's just a matter of thinking it through and reacting to it, you know, trying to put down the next mark so that it improves what came before. Uh, so this is me right here, of course. And uh, I am painted with three of my very precious friends. And um, this uh, event was at a wedding of Carrie, this lovely lady here. And on the Sunday, after the wedding, there was an event in the park where um, uh, Penny, this person, she decided she would paint all the kids' faces with, uh, with her paints that she brought with her. And so when the kids were all done, she started working on us. And it was a wonderful experience. So I ended up with this painting and these uh, silly little things in my hair that actually children would wear. And uh, um, it was a really fabulous experience. It, it uh, gave me permission in my own way to behave like a child again. And um, uh, it was a really hot day and we all were in the river with our face paint on and cooling off and laughing and having a lovely time. And um, uh, the other girls ended up washing off their paint in the water, but I kept mine on for the rest of the day. And actually what, what I, I think came out of this too is that um, I felt like we never really grow up inside. And so often through adulthood, we don't get in touch with what, which are inner children, right? So uh, the reason I have picked mixed media in doing these two paintings, because I end up with a lot of layers. So I scrub off things, I cover up things, um, parts um, are revealed. And for me, that's the way we are in real life too. We, we show certain things to certain people and there's a certain persona we show to the public in general. It's a medium I find that works well with, with doing portraiture. And um, the, the pencil crayons I use for expressive purposes too. I, I scratch away at it in, in um, an expressive way. I have you know, tried to embrace my, uh, just letting my hair grow 
gray, um, accepting the wrinkles that, that appear. And um, um, I've noticed with my peers and other women who are older as well, they, they seem to be getting younger. They're, they're not slowing down at all. 